Now we're going to take a look at doing a covariance and correlation. And we're going to do this two ways. We're going to do this with the actual formula that you see over here uh, in the middle of the screen. And we're also going to just use the covariance and correlation function that's built into Excel. And normally that's the one that you're going to use, but for completeness we're going to show the actual uh, calculation. So here we have our eruption duration and our waiting time. And we have uh, approximately 273 observations straight down. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to have to calculate, according to this, we need to calculate each individual x uh, observation, so that's what's known as xi, minus x bar. So now x bar, remember, is the mean. And so we've calculated the mean over here already as the average of B2 to B273. And we've done that for waiting time as well. And just because we know we're going to need it later on, we've calculated the standard deviation uh, for both eruption duration and waiting time. Um, here, we've got 272 observations. Now, if you knew it, you could fill it out. However, we did the count function of one of the columns to give us uh, the actual count of the total observations. And we're going to use that for this part of the uh, covariance equation. So the x and x bar, what we're going to do is we're going to put in this formula, which is b2 minus n2. And once we do that, we get uh, 0.112. We need to do the same thing here for y bar. And we get 7.901 when we subtract C2 from N4 being the waiting time mean. So we're going to take this straight down. And you see that we have all of the X minus X bar values. And we'll do the same thing for the Y minus Y bar values, and we'll get those. Now according to the covariance calculation, we have to multiply those two together. And that's represented here in column F as column D times column E. So we'll take care of that. We'll take, we'll multiply these two times this, and we get 0.887. We'll narrow, we'll copy this down the whole way, and we end up with all of the associated values. Now, all we need to do at this point is add up all of the uh, values in column F, which would represent this numerator here, and then divide by n minus 1. So we'll take our formula here, F2, uh, to F273, which is this column here, divided by N1 minus 1. And when we, when we hit enter, we end up with 13.97. Now, we'll calculate the covariance over here and see what the value looks like when we do that. So we use the co covariance formula, B2 to B273, C2 to 273, because this will be the X values and this will be the Y values, and we want the covariance between the two. So when we run this, we end up with 13.92. So they're close enough. That's some rounding errors that occur uh, within Excel, but suffice it to say they'll be correct. Now for the correlation, all we need to do is take our covariance and divide it by the standard deviation of x multiplied by the standard deviation of y, which we've calculated over here as 1.14 and 13. So you'll see that we represent this by i2, which is the number 13.97781, and we divide by n3 times n5. And when we hit enter on there, we end up with 0 0.900811. When we come over to the correlation function that's built into Excel, we'll run Corel again with the same two data sets, and you'll see we get the exact same answer, which is what we would expect. Now let's take a quick look at a scatter plot for this. If we've done this correctly, a 0 0.90 basically should show an upward positively linear correlation. So we should see a linear trend from bottom left to top right. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, create a scatter plot, select our entire data set, and we'll come over to insert. And we're going to insert a chart. We're going to choose a scatter plot chart, which is this. Okay, so we have our waiting time uh, here. Uh, waiting time on one axis and the uh, eruption and duration on the other axis. So as we can see, the y-axis is definitely going to be the waiting time. You can take a look by the numbers. And the eruption duration is going to be across the bottom axis. Now what we might want to do here is we might want to change our scale so that it looks a little better. We have a lot of white space in both areas, and it might hide some things. I won't really in this case, but we want to do that anyway. So we're going to right mouse click on the y-axis, and we're going to format the axis. And we're going to change the bounds, and we're going to say our minimum bound is actually going to be 40. And the reason we're saying 40 is because it looks like the last point over here is really uh, just above 40. So we'll make that 40. And we'll say that our last point is around 100. 
And as soon as we do that, it changes the scale and we can see a lot more dispersion here, which is exactly what we want. Now what we want to do is we'll do the same thing on the x-axis. So we'll click on the x-axis here and we'll change our minimum bounds to somewhere around, let's say, 1.3. We'll give it a little bit of room there. And our maximum, we'll say, is going to be around, uh, we'll just leave it at 5.0. That should be enough. And when we take a look, we've got all of our data points here in a row, and it definitely looks like an upward line. So what we want to do is we want to add a trend line here. We're going to click on one of the series, this, uh, the series with any one of the dots that we've got. We'll right mouse click, and we're going to click Add Trend Line. When we do, it will draw this trend line for us, and we select Linear, which is already the default, and it shows us a linear line kind of in an upward fashion. We can have a little fun with that, and we can basically color that line if we like to make it a little stand out a little bit more. We could make it red, um, and we could change the dash types so that we get a little bit more differential here. And when we do that, we have our scatter plot chart that clearly shows a positively linear correlation. Uh, in an upward fashion, bottom, bottom left to top right, that matches with our correlation values.